We love you, Lord. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. Is there anything stirring, Lord, that you'd like to speak, Lord? Anything personally, Lord, or corporately, Lord? Speak to us now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, Father, that we have a right relationship with you, Lord, and that with our Savior, Lord, that you did everything that's needed, Lord, Father, for us to be able to have a relationship with you, to have wedding garments, Lord, that are matching for us individually. And, Lord, Father, I just feel like you're saying, Lord, it is just time for you, the church, to consecrate themselves, to put accounts, any for unforgiveness, um, anything that it needs repentance of, it is time for you as my bride to cleanse yourselves of anything, any kind of stains that you have. It is time because I, I come for a bride without spot or wrinkle. And I pray that, I just pray into that, Lord. I just ask Holy Spirit to speak through me. I just pray, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I, just, I, I just believe the Lord is just saying is that, it's, we don't know the time or season, but we just need to, to, to go to Him, have conversations with Him, to seek Him about anything that is in our lives, any bondage, any sin, any, anything that would hinder our relationship with Him. And I just, I, just, I just believe He just wants us to have, He gives us every opportunity, we, every warning, every opportunity before he makes a move to be ready we just thank you father that you always prepare us for what is coming and we thank you father is there anything else i just feel like the heart of the lord is that wants us to remove all sin and hindrances because of what he wants to pour into us. He doesn't want anything to hinder that flow of his pouring in for us to be distracted, you know, or to look away from him and what he is doing and what he desires to flow through us. I feel in my spirit that he just wants us to be cleansed. He wants us to be 
a bride that is without spot or wrinkle because before his coming there is going to be an outpouring of his glory. And for that to flow properly, there has to be a bride that is prepared. I just keep sensing the outpouring of his spirit is coming. Prepare yourselves to be my servant, my servants, for my outpouring of my presence. For the lost, the people that need him. Just prepare, prepare to show people love that need it, his love. This is why I feel... Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, good morning, church. Good morning, Avamir. Today's um, sermon is on hearing God and being humble. I, I just I kind of changed it up a little bit, but I just uh, worked on it last night. And I, I just, just the promptings of the Lord and exactly what he wants to speak this morning and, and the art of hearing God is one of the most amazing aspects of our Christian faith. And why is the art of hearing God so amazing? It's because it's one of the benefits of us being a Christian. The art of hearing God takes time. It takes intimacy. It takes relationship. And it definitely takes discipline and maturity in every, indiv in every individual seeking uh, the face of God, that deep relationship with the Lord. And for those people seeking the face of God, that deep intimacy with Him, that is seeking the heart of God for the love for people, to do His will in obedience, walking by faith, so God can and will use those particular individuals in powerful ways for His glory. But also the Lord loves just to speak to you, just to, to speak to you as individuals, as His children, being able to hear Him. He just loves intimacy. He just loves his children. Why? Because he's a, he, he, his love, he loves you, and it's so amazing. He's such an amazing father. Why would he not want to speak to his children? See, you don't have to be some zealous Christian to have an art for hearing the Lord. You just need to be his child just to be born again. That's it. And we should all seek and desire to move and, and, and to move more towards God, to, to desire more of God in your life, to be able to hear Him cl more clearly and to have a more intimate relationship with Him. As we grow in hearing the Lord's voice, we grow in our relationship with Him because it builds a bond. It builds a bond with Him. Because it's, there's a dialogue going from our Creator to us. And it shows us that, that true intimacy with Him. You know, it just builds that faith in us. It builds that relationship. It builds that love that, we, that He has for us. Not only that, but it's incredible, honestly, to be able to have a dialogue with our Creator. And it does take a person after God's own heart to be a vessel that will be used in pure, powerful ways, either big or small. And then what I mean by small could be just that one person in front of you or, or many. But we are all called to be a disciple of Jesus for use of his kingdom, ready for service, and, and need to learn to hear his voice as a disciple. To bring his word and his presence to the world or people that are just around us. Just so that people that we experience can come to us and we can pray for them and we can hear from the Lord for them. A disciple is devoted to serving the Lord with all their heart. 
to fear and to honor the Lord and to obey His Word, no matter what happens or what is thrown at them, understanding their strength comes from the Lord. Those are the ones that are, will be truly used by God in mighty, powerful ways, even if it's just one person. Isn't it amazing, you know, when you, you get a word from the Lord or, or you just feel something in your, in your spirit and you just give that to that one person, how much joy it really brings you? That's mighty powerful ways. That's supernatural. And it's amazing because God can trust you. God can use you because you've had that time with him in the secret place. And you've been in his word and you understand him and you've learned to hear his voice. However, without proper training or maturity, you know, when we speak to individuals, you know, we have to be careful, careful not to speak something out of our own pride or flesh because we can hurt people. People hurt people when walking in immaturity, believing they heard from the Lord when it's just with their own flesh or pride speaking, which is not okay. But when it's okay is when it, we are in the training process, walking in humility as we are in the learning process. For example, we say, when, as we're giving a word to a person, I feel or I think this is what I'm hearing from the Lord. But we do not say in immaturity, thus says the Lord. And Numbers 23, 12 says, Must I not be obedient and careful to speak what the Lord has put in my mouth? The scripture reminds us to study and mature not only with the word of God and not to mis misinterpret it, but also any word we think we hear from the Lord. And we need to understand that the Bible further tells us to study and to show ourselves a, a, approved. And, and the gifts are certainly of no exception to this biblical mandate. And 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves to prove to God a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God does discern between immature and false use of any gift or teaching of his word. There is a grace for time of training, making mistakes, which we all do. We all make mistakes. But it, it's not walking in pride or believing we have it all figured out or, 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 you know, we really need to walk carefully and prayerfully as we give any word to any individual. Understanding training is always needed. And as we humble ourselves unto the Lord, rel relinquishing any pride at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ, He will continue to perfect that which He began in us. If we believe that God is calling us in any way to be used as a disciple, we should continue to humble ourselves and fall on the face, fall on our face in fear and trembling, being completely humble and not puffed up in any way, and accept the fire and purifying process that is necessary for us to overcome our character flaws that are in us. So that are, that are so rooted in us from our past or present or hurts and things that have happened in our life. Before any of us can be used in any, in any way as a disciple of Jesus to an individual or to a group, we must work on our own integrity and our own character to line up with the character of Jesus. The work starts in us first. The refining season must happen, so, and, and we must allow it. We must allow to do the work that, that the Lord wants to do in us, to be submitted to Him and His authority and what He wants to do in us. And just say, yes and amen, Lord. Do what's needed in me. Refine in me the areas that need refining. And we just allow that with patience and understanding with the Lord. And First Peter 1, chapter 6 and 7 says, In this you greatly rejoice, though for now a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, <coughs> excuse me, may be found in praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As we seek to be 
used or to grow in the gifts of the Spirit, God will test us. It's necessary. It's not, it's not if God will. It's when, it's when and how He will. And if, if you fail the test, understand it's okay. He just says, okay, son, okay, daughter, let's, let's, let's just try this again. He's just trying to work on our character defects and, and character flaws so he can create us in, in, into that beautiful butterfly, that beautiful flower, that beautiful vessel that can be used to, to be his vessel, to carry him, his spirit, his glory. The more of us is removed, the more of him can be placed in, John 3.30. And 2 Chronicles 32, 31 says, God withdrew from him in order to test him that he might know all that is in his heart. See, God is looking for our motives. He tests us to purify us, test our knowledge of the scriptures through circumstances to see as you go through those things, will you depend on him and his word and go to prayer? He tests us so that our faith will grow. And and will we rely on his promises, the prophetic words, the things that are spoken? And we, will we yield ourselves and our tongue to God? And James 3, 8. See, God will take you into the wilderness to the point of, so that he can take the world out of you and out of your flesh so you can flow in his spirit more. And, and be more in tune with him and know him and how to handle anything that is getting thrown at, at you. See, the more of him we know, the more that we can endure with, with peace and patience and understanding and joy. See, God, before God can use you, he will test your obedience, your integrity, your character. God values character more than he values any gift. He will even put you on the shelf for a while to see how you respond in trusting him and will you continue to serve him in the meantime with all your heart. How will you endure the silence? How will you endure the, the middle before the promise comes? How will you respond to him? How will you trust him? This is not something that we should take lightly because we are dealing with people and their hearts and souls for all eternity. We're dealing with the kingdom of God. Like King David, God is looking for people after his own heart. 1 Samuel 13, 14 and Acts 13, 22. God will even test you with men and women of faith that are serving the Lord to see how you will respond in serving them as a layman or under them, not being in the spotlight or in any kind of ministry or any kind of service. God will test you. How will you honor that person of authority? Will you honor God as, as you do? See, there is a season of patience. You know, we have to understand that Will we have a season of patience in our heart and, the, and those seasons that we go through? The point of all this testing is preparation for our integrity and have a balanced heart for ministering to people. See, in the prophetic gifts, we must have a natural balance of fear of the Lord and being humble. As a pastor I once heard says, prophetic integrity is often lost as we tend to overemphasize any of, the, of these characteristics uh, based on their own personalities instead of the kingdom of God or the biblical truth. This leads towards legalism, manipulation, or control. See, knowing the diversity of God helps maintain a proper balance. But if we only see in kindness, we can fall onto unsanctified mercy if we see only as a roaring lion we can easily become religious and controlling and whippers instead of equippers and this can lead to rebellion rebellion is a form of witchcraft and it is of the devil in 1 Samuel 15 25 therefore we must behold the kindness and the holiness of God 
Both comes from His love from us. We love because He first loved us. See, prophecy is a revelation of a word from the Lord through a direct prompting of the Holy Spirit. And the disciple is that instrument thereof. Like we hear between worship like this morning and this word. See, it's a prediction spoken or written to foretell e the events divine under God, speaking under inter interpretation, or and to exercise the office of a prophet as in the fivefold ministry. Anything else would just be information, not revelation. See, Satan only works at information. He cannot produce any kind of revelation. Prophecy is revelation spoken, spoken through a man or a woman speaking forth God's heart and mind with a purpose by inspiration of the Holy, Holy Spirit. The speaking incorporates a, a revealing something unknown and the prophetic things of the Spirit resident in the one speaking. See, hearing God is amazing. And the Bible says that we should all seek to prophesy so we should all seek to hear the lord and prophecy primarily builds us up it edifies us it gives us joy it gives us peace it gives us comfort it, it gives us strength and encourages us and it communicates a further counsel of god to his people than not only the word of god but it, it's that other counsel that leads people to god and his word into that relationship with him what did God speak? What is God saying? See, we are disciples of Christ, and any child of God can hear Him and have that dialogue with God, and it's amazing when you learn to hear His voice. See, we are called to edify each other, our brothers and sisters, the body of Christ, and all, all any kind of ministry must be done for the strengthening of the church, first and foremost. And the word of God or prophecy is to strengthen the Christian's faith and spiritual life and for moral determination to remain faithful to Jesus and his teachings. Right? We, we can speak to people and say, the Lord, thus says the Lord, or I, I feel like the Lord is saying something to encourage you. Just keep on going. I see what you're going through, but it's all going to work out. And 1 Corinthians 14.3 says, But he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men or women. So, see, to comfort is to comfort the soul. To edify is to edify that spirit in us. And, and to exhortation is our body. And it's also, you know, any kind of word or uh, prophecy can also be direction or correct, correction. But I, I only speak of that to those to use that those for those that are mature in faith mature saints but first corinthians 14 26 is how th how is it then brethren whenever you came together each of you has a psalm has a teaching has a tongue has a revelation and has an interpretation that all things be done for edification that's what's amazing about hearing god we are all edifying each other and helping each other as we are all of the same spirit speaking to all of us. See, the primary purpose of all the spiritual gifts is to strengthen us, the body of Christ, and in the individual Christian, to lead people to God, to His Word. Building up means to promote that spiritual life within that person, for that person to be able to grow in their character and their maturity with God as they follow Jesus. Our heart should be to grow for the love of God and the concern for others and, and to have that purity of heart, of consecration, a good conscience, a sincere faith, and a readiness to serve God for His purpose and whatever that may be for each of us. We all have a different purpose. He created us with individual purposes. And it's good that he did that. So no one is left out. Everybody has a purpose. And 1 Corinthians 13.2 says, 
and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so I could remove mountains but have not love, um, it's nothing. And those who, whose lives are filled with the gifts and great works of faith but have not love, the love for people and do not know or understand true spirituality, do not really understand truly the completeness of the kingdom of God. Because the, 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 the glue that holds the kingdom of God together is love. His love. And see, no matter how much they, we know or how much we understand, God is not impressed with religious knowledge or religious works. See, without love, it all adds up to nothing. One thing we should remember, God is more concerned about our character than he is about our gifts. See, humility sensitizes our spirit being to him, whereas pride dulls our ability to hear him. You see, all the gifts of the fivefold ministry brings unity, intimacy, and maturity to the body of Christ. <coughs> Apostles, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. They're all intertwined beautifully together and work in perfect harmony in God's perfect plan for the body of Christ. And no matter what of the part of the fivefold ministry or whatever gift you have, it's all orchestrated beautifully for God to be able to use for his purpose for these times and such as this. We're all working together as a family, helping each other. And one of the main ways that helps us to mature in our gifts is hearing God and our character. Two things that work hand in hand. All parts of the body of Christ are connected to Him as He is the head. He is the source which each gift and callings and, and purposes He has for each of you. It all comes from hearing the Lord and we should strive to be sober and have a sound mind and have an open heart to hear the voice of God and to re relay it as such with fear and respect for God we all hear the Lord each of you have heard the Lord I, if you're born again you've heard the Lord's voice why because if you didn't feel him or didn't hear him at all you wouldn't be born again you wouldn't be saved We've all heard his voice, his promptings, that gut feeling, right? Each of you have heard him one way or another. The point for me speaking on this topic is it's, it's really to encourage you to, to practice and learn thoroughly through your daily life to be able to distinguish between God's voice and your own. One, one of the ways that determines how we listen to God's voice is how do we listen to others? How do you listen to other people when they're speaking to you? Do you pay attention? Do you not allow your mind to wander? Do you take time and not to be in a hurry with your agenda? See, in any, in any kind of conversation, it's, it's, a, it's a back and forth dialogue of speaking and listening. So we pray and ask God questions and that only He can answer. In a relationship with Jesus, he is real and alive, and he wants to have dialogue with each of you. You just have to have the desire and the willingness to spend time with him and to be and, and to pray and to ask him questions and to expect and to quiet your spirit to be able to hear him. To steal yourself, like steal, to have that peace and pray. And wait and keep practicing. Don't give up. We definitely want to hear Him clearly. It just takes time and practice to be able to hear the Lord's voice clearly. We all need to work on it. I need to work on it. And, and if you're praying with someone, practicing and hearing the Lord, and neither of you have a word for each other, it's okay. Just keep praying. Just keep doing it. You will hear the Lord's voice. It just takes time and practice. But we should practice it in a safe place with a safe friend, a mature pastor, or a mature Christian that, that can be, co be a covering for us. 
that has walked in the gifts for a while and has patience, practiced our gifts before, and we should practice before we minister to any open people, like people openly, that we don't know. There, there is proper etiquette, training to giving people a word from the Lord as you feel you heard heard from him, but it, it, it's good to keep practicing and not give up because you will hear God's voice. It just takes time. And recognize, uh, and I recommend training, and in, in if if you feel led to really get into prophesying and really getting into giving people a word, you know, and we in this church have just uh, this week we'll be finishing an 18-week training course on this topic. But we do have to grow and not be afraid to make mistakes. You know, we all make mistakes, and any part of our relationship with the Lord, He knows we're we're not going to be doing this perfect or do anything perfect. And it's okay, because we all make them. No one has got it all figured out or does it perfectly. If we truly believe we've heard from the Lord, then we just need to be patient and ask the Lord how to deliver the Lord in an edifying and loving way. And if we miss a word, it's okay. We just need to be humble and say, I missed it. I'm sorry. Please forgive me and believe I heard, I believed I heard from the Lord. And if you're going to speak a word that you believe that you heard from the Lord publicly, you need to pray through and really ask the Lord that if it is truly from Him before you publicize a word. I just recommend that because there's a lot of things on the internet that people speak. And I'm just saying that we just need to be careful. And if you're in a church, if you're in a church and you feel like you got a word, I just ask that you would Ask the people, the elders of the church, what is the proper adequate, adequate to, of that church before giving a word? And this is because we are representing Jesus Christ, our ultimate authority and the authority of the church and the authority of our elders. And respect that authority and respect our Lord, whom that, who we are to glorify and not discredit the prophetic, right? The, the gifts of the Spirit. We don't want to dull them in any way. We want to use these gifts in a, in a respectful way and honoring the authority that God has put in place. Just as David did. David respected Saul, respected Saul's authority, and, and he wouldn't touch Saul. Even though that David was anointed to be king, David still waited for God to handle the situation. So David respected Saul's the authority that Saul had and so we should do the same because God really honors that really God really respects that and honors that and so we should strive to be mature and respect respect the gifts of the Holy Spirit strive to enhance our gifts to the fullest and understand with fear of the Lord that we are held accountable to the gifts that he has given us and and how we use them for his glory and, and Romans 14, 12 says, and Each of us shall give an account of himself to God. As it says, the Bible says we work out our own salvation. Many of us have been hurt in the body of Christ through control or manipulation out of insecurity and not demonstrating the love of God. And, and it's not right, but I want to tell you, don't let this stop you. Don't let this hinder your anointing. Don't let this stop you from walking in full power and authority that God has given you. People make mistakes and people do things, but we forgive them, we move on, and we move on with the Lord is doing it in us. God will handle all that stuff. Should this stop us from pursuing the gifts of the prophetic? No, it shouldn't. We should show how, how the gifts and callings are performed properly and biblically through proper training and teaching. Proper discipleship. That's what I'm calling for. That's what I'm trying to speak today. We just need proper training and discipline, equipping and nurturing and development in the prophetic gifts, and to be truly discipled correctly in all areas of the Christian faith. And mostly, mostly in our our character and in consecration. And 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says, Pursue love, desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you prophesy. So is it good that we all seek to prophesy? Absolutely. But we must walk in love first and foremost. 
And then the gifts will be used in love for the entire body of Christ. So the gifts are given to strengthen the body, body of Christ and to promote oneness and not separation. Also to demonstrate God's power and authority, His sovereign, so, uh, so, His love and understanding and His care that He has for people. And, and any of the positions of the fivefold ministry, the gifts and callings can be dangerous if we lack any proper training or discipleship. And, and just because it can just hinder us as the body of Christ as a whole, as an entity. And we want to strengthen the body. We don't want to d demolish or, or d dismantle it in any way. And so we, some of us have, you know, some people out there have met, led people astray by false doctrine or false teaching or, or unbiblical ways of using the gifts. And I'm just calling it back in. I'm calling to hone it back in. I'm, whole, I'm calling it you know, for us to say, you know what, I'm not proper trained. You know, to really humble ourselves and say, you know what, it's okay. I know I've been with the Lord a long time or a short time or whatever time I've been with the Lord. I can humble myself and say, Lord, I need proper training in this area. You're calling me into either healing and deliverance. You're calling me to prophesy. You're calling me in this gift. And I'm just, Lord, I'm just, I know I need proper training because I want to be used as a proper tool. For your kingdom and we need we need that training we need to practice and we need to be patient and a lot of intimacy with the Lord in prayer closet and fasting and studying our Bibles it's, it's always spirit and truth and listening and obeying God and we see we, we need to build a history of hearing and listening to God and the small things then we will build upon what, uh, build upon that and the bigger things. See, the, the small things may seem in, insignificant or even silly sometimes, but we have to start small with the small things. We have to start somewhere. There has to be, you know, births, you know, and it's not always easy. It's not always clean, but it, we just know that as long as we are seeking to be discipled and training and humble ourselves, you know, and, and really learn protocol, we can mature and gain proper experience because, you know, um, in the end, and the result of all that, we will be used rightly and purely and wholly, and we'll really honor God, we'll really glorify Him. And Zechariah 4.10 says, Who has despised the day of small things? We cannot despise the small beginnings in our walk with the Lord. So we don't despise those small beginnings. All of us have to start somewhere. No one has a, no one is birthed in any kind of gift or any kind of thing, any kind of ministry, anything, you know, and then all of a sudden you're just graduated. Always, you know, small beginnings. And as we build a history of hearing the Lord and we put it into practice and it coming to be true and making a history through experiences and striving to be more mature in the gifts humbly we can be used more and more and it'll be fun and exciting because we know in our conscience we know in our in our hearts that we're doing we're, we're really trying to do it the right way and, and as you go through this week i just ask the lord you know really i just ask the lord that he would help you in your prayer life all that you're listening in avamir or whoever's listening on the internet that really just i just pray as you go through this week that the Lord will give you a word. Maybe one word. One word can change someone's life. Just one vow <laughs> could really change someone's life. And, and, I, and I just su suggest some things. As you pray, journaling is an amazing way to hear the Lord's voice. Just write down what you're hearing from the Lord and, and don't, don't make any changes to it. Just Pray and talk to the Lord and just write it down. Because sometimes all of us don't hear the audible voice of God or hear those things. And sometimes writing is a, is a form of actually hearing the Lord. Um, you can, and also, if you, if you can't do that physically because of your hands or what have you, use a tablet, use your phone, use a, you, you know, your, your smartphone and, you know, to record what you're, you're believing that you're hearing from the Lord. And, 
and ask the Lord things. What's the next song going to be on the radio? You know, um, you know, as a coworker, what are they going to? What color are they going to wear today? You know, those simple questions. They might seem silly, but it builds you up in the small things to be able to hear Him. And I'm just trying to encourage you to ask the Lord to tell you the things that seem small. Ask, ask the Lord those things and write them down and see how you do. See how, you know, where you're at. You know, we were just out of class and, you know, the person was saying that they would go to, when every time they would go to an office building, you know, there's multiple elevators, they would push the button and ask the Lord, okay, which door is going to open? You know, simple things like that will help us to build us in hearing the Lord. And um, when God sees you seeking and willingness to hear Him, He will reward you. He will help you because He loves you. He wants you to have that dialogue with you. It just takes us to grow that muscle that's in our spirit to be able to hear Him clearly. And um, and it'll be fun. And it'll be you'll able to have amazing conversations with him as well and 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 lastly in the days that we're living in it's important to be able to hear the lord's voice to be led by him the things that may come you know to be directed by him as we as we walk through our daily lives we need encouragement from him we need direction and understanding and wisdom and discernment and one of those ways we build on that is our prayer life and being able to hear the lord so I just pray that you guys will really practice this. And, and I do believe that's a good word for my wife this morning to prepare ourselves, our wedding garments. That's talking about our character and our consecration. And so if there's any areas in your life that you just feel like needs to be corrected, it's now's the time. Now's the time to work on those things that the Lord is really putting in your heart to work on. That's why he's saying these things. Because he wants you to be spotless without wrinkle on your garments. And so I just pray and ask that you, you really seek the Lord and, and that you know we can really help our character get you know get those things right so we can just project his love and his character even more out of us. And not just to give up and just say this is who I am or whatever. You know, no, we should all strive to have more of him in our lives as John 3.30 says less of me and more of him so let's just pray Lord I just come to you right now Lord and I ask Lord that everyone that's listening today Lord that doesn't hear your voice Lord I really pray that you'd help them Lord all of them that have a desire to hear you Lord I just pray you'd speak to them really encourage them as you are an encouraging father I just pray that you'd encourage them and help them and what the, each of us need to do, to, whatever we need to change in our lives, to work on our character, Lord, and, and to have more consecration in our life and just to be able to hear you better. And I just pray that, Lord, you just eat, eat, you know each of us and what we need to work on. And I just pray, Lord, that you would really help us, Lord, encourage us that we'd hear you. And Lord, that, that we would it, it put such an encouragement that they would just put that desire to do it every day to really seek you in the secret place Lord and to hear your voice I pray that all those that do not hear your voice I just pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit that your ears be opened opened to the Holy Spirit as the word of God says my sheep shall hear my voice so let's pray right now all blocked ears be opened now in Jesus name and I pray, Lord, that each person would be able to hear you, Lord, and to be a, a proper vessel for your kingdom. Thank you, Lord. So we just thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. We worship you. We praise you in Jesus' name. So seek the truth of God's word. Walk humbly before the Lord. Pray and fast and seek the Lord. And he will reward you. And one of the greatest and the most powerful rewards is this. It's better than riches and, and anything on this earth. What is the, the more precious and more rewarding 
is him. It's him. That is the greatest reward. And I just pray that all of us would just seek more of him. And we're all his disciples. And to be able to hear the Lord. And I pray that we'd all live in the spirit, the spirit of God for these times to be his ambassador for the kingdom of God because we are living in the last days. We don't know when, we don't know how, all of that, but we do know it, it is approaching. So we, ju we just want to represent him well in our lives. So we just thank you, Father. Lord, Father, I thank you for this teaching. Thank you for this day, Lord, I pray. Lord, that you bless everyone that hear, heard this today, Lord, that really help them, encourage them, and edify them in their relationship with you, that your love, Lord, just would fill them up even more, Lord, as they go to you, and and and, and uh, we just we work on ourselves, our, our character, our integrity, and the things that need to be removed, Lord, that we just experience more of you more of your love lord pour your love pour your spirit more on them encourage them bless them because the joy of the lord is our strength lord and i pray that joy lord i just pray that joy would just be spread like a wildfire lord and that would be our strength we just thank you father so may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may the lord's face shine upon you be gracious to you and give you everlasting peace in jesus name Remember, read and study your Bibles, pray without ceasing. Um, be the salt, be the light, preach to all who have ears to hear, and listen and obey God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, bless you guys. Thank you.